This week we're going to talk a little in-depthly about the 1885 Saginaw Valley Strike, which was one of the uh, most important strikes to occur in our immediate area. In 1885, workers, along with Knights of Labor representatives, had fought very hard to get the Michigan legislature to pass a law mandating 10 hours a day as a maximum work day. This did not mean that they could only work 10 hours. It meant that any hours worked above and beyond 10 hours a day that Michigan laborers would be paid for that overtime. The workers uh, had, and Knights of Labor had fought for over a decade to try to get some type of hours regulation. Workers were worked extraordinarily long hours, sometimes 14 hours a day, uh, six days a week, and were paid minimal wages. To be a worker in a lumber mill, a railroad uh, company, um, a copper mine, anywhere really, um, was hard horrible work. Employers treated workers really like slaves um, in many ways. Um, they Workers were unfree to make many of the decisions that normal people make today. They could not decide how long they would work. They could not negotiate their pay. If they were injured on the job, they were held responsible or their fellow employees were held responsible, not the employer. If they were paid, they were not paid regularly. Um, when they were paid, they were not necessarily even paid in American currency. Sometimes they were paid in store credit, um, which gave them no opportunity to decide how they would purchase their goods, from whom they would purchase their goods. And so workers were, were really, they, they were just uh, in a real bind. And so many of them started to join the Knights of Labor in the early 1880s in order to try to gain control over labor relations. The 1885 Saginaw Valley strike is this important time in, in Michigan history, but it's representative of national history, where workers went on strike to try to force employers to negotiate. Now, in 1885 then, in, in May of 1885, the Michigan legislature did enact a 10-hour day. However, the 10-hour day had a clause in it. The law said that if workers and employers uh, wished to, they could contract for longer hours. And the workers knew that they had no control, so their employers were going to make them sign contracts stating that they would work as long as the employers wished. And they then went in the Saginaw Valley to the various lumber mills, asking the employers to give them a 10-hour day. They wanted the same wages as they had been before for 12 hours a day. They wanted to have um, pay in American currency, and they wanted a frequency of pay. Uh, sometimes they were paid by the month, sometimes they were paid every other week, and they said, no, we want it to be standard, that... Um, we are paid on this day every whenever. They, they weren't really uh, stringent about what they wanted, but they wanted it to be regular. And the lumber, work, uh, lumber barons uh, ignored them. So in June of that month, um, they once again said, we will go on strike. In July, they did. In Bay City and Saginaw, uh, Saginaw's, the, both cities were actually two separate cities at the time. There was East Saginaw and then there was Saginaw City. Um, went on strike, and it rocked the nation around the country. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles papers were all covering this strike because we provided the majority of the wood for the nation. So when uh, our workers went on strike, it was crippling the lumber industry. Uh, it's a sad story. The lumbers went on strike. They were arrested. They were uh, beaten. Mercenaries were called in. Pinkerton men, as they were called. Um, they were supposed to be private detectives, but really they were hired guns. Um, were called in by the lumber barons. The Michigan Guard was called to the area. And eventually the lumber barons were successful in, in uh, squashing the strike. And so... Um, the lumberers uh, did lose. What they did gain, though, they did not gain their 10-hour day. Many of them went back with contracts for longer, but um, they were the lumber barons did agree to pay them um, frequently, so on a regular basis. Uh, it was a sad moment, and it really exemplifies the po problems that laborers faced in the 1880s.